What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Dropping Hits, back with another prison story for y'all today. Today, I'm going to be talking about some of the people that I can't forget or that I came across while doing my bid for those six years. Now, whether they had an impact on me or... God damn, cat. Actually, before we get into the video, huge shout out to my members. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. Appreciate you guys so much. Very grateful. Now, with all that out of the way, let's drop right into it. To get things started, man, I remember this one guy. He was an older cat. Older dude. Always wearing the damn jacket, whether it be summer, winter, fall, spring, all the seasons. He never took a shower, man. They called this dude Yep Yep. Because all he would do was say, Yep, 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 yep. But like, what's going on, man? How you doing, man? Yep, 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 yep. What? That's all he would say, though, man. It's like, what? But it's like this dude. Well, nobody room cell with this guy, man, because he one, he never took a shower, and two, you couldn't have a conversation with him. And he, he reminded me of the, uh, the Street Fighters two character. What was his name Blanca? But he had white hair. That shit was like, <laughs> dude was a trip though. Uh, he, like I said, he was older, older dude. So I'm not sure if he's still doing time or not. But why he looked just like Blanca, man. <laughs> Anyhow, so. This other dude I was really cool with, uh, we used to call him Black, he's from North Carolina. And this dude always wanted to get tattoos from me. Cause y'all know I was doing tattoos while I was inside or whatever. But he always wanted tattoos. I'm like, dude, they can't see them. You're too black, man. Like, I'm, I'm dead serious. <laughs> like, there's no point putting these tattoos on you, man. But he was real cool though, man. I ended up doing it. I couldn't see what I was doing. I always had to keep wiping. But he's a real cool dude, man. He, I remember he got transferred over to the um, the camp next door because I was at the medium facility. I was at FCI Medium, and my uh, my best friend who actually did the charges with me was at the camp, so I was able to send a little message to him, let him know I was good. I wanted to see how he was doing. But Black ended up getting in trouble over the camp. He just can't stay out of trouble. It seems like came back. The yo man, your man B and everything, yo, he's all right, man. He just want to make sure you straight too. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good, man. Hey, man, go ahead and do my back, man. I just want all this elaborate stuff. Dude, I can't do that, man. Come on, man. I don't even know what the hell I'm doing half the time yet. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't on the level that I am now. I don't know what's up with him. Like, I don't really keep in touch with people that I was locked up with. I did kind of like at first, but not now. Like, everybody's done moved on, it seems like. Um, so yeah, so anyway, another guy, I remember, I didn't know anything about gambling or sports gambling before I got locked up. Like I didn't know, I did not know anything about it. So my celly at the time, well, I'm gonna get to him in a minute. My celly at the time, he introduced me, Hey man, we, they got these tickets. They got the teams on them and the way they do it. And where I was at, <clears throat> it's either you pick the winner by whatever spread, you know, or the over and under total of it. So I started doing it during basketball season. And this one guy, he was actually in our unit who ran the ticket, sports ticket, his name was Smooth, right? And that was another dude from North Carolina, matter of fact. But this guy, he would not bet unless he was like sure about something. Like if other people tried to start a new uh, uh, sports ticket on the pound, right? And they try to do like go against him, like some competition shit, and they try to start their own sports it. He would wait at the, I don't know how he did it. He would do it at the perfect time though. He would, he didn't bet that often because he ran his own shit, but when he would place a bet, he would put the other people out of business because they couldn't pay up what he bet. He must have like some kind of luck or something. I don't know, but every, it seemed like every single time he placed a bet on the other person's ticket, he put them out of business because he won. He would hit the ticket and win. And I'm over here scrambling, trying to get like, bet what I'm betting you know I can't win for shit I won a few times but I'm like this I was playing like every day every day even to this day I like sometimes do it during football season and all that stuff but I don't really mess with it like talking about it anymore but you know it's something to do while you're locked up so this other dude when I first got to where I went back in 2004 
when I'm sitting at the table, they got these tables out in the unit, whatever. So I'm sitting at the table. This one dude comes up to me and introduce himself. His name is Jason, whatever. I think he was from, uh, I want to say it was from Northern Virginia, maybe Fairfax, something like that. Arlington. I don't really remember, <clears throat> but me and him clicked right away. We was kicking it, man. And he was trying to get me to do the showers because that was his job, right? And that's like the worst job, one of the worst jobs you could have inside the unit is cleaning them goddamn showers. Motherfucker is doing the, you know, they're coming all over, you know, coming all over the walls and shit, you know, nobody, nobody want to clean that shit, man. So, but he was like, either you got to do, he's like, I'm trying to hit you to some game here, man. Fucking either you got to go ahead and do these showers or they're going to put you in the kitchen. I damn sure ain't trying to be in the kitchen, man. I'm going to let y'all know that right now. I ain't, I can't do the kitchen, man. I ain't getting up all early to make breakfast. Nah. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do the showers. And I fucking hated it, man. I fucking hated them scrubbing the showers, man, with all that cum guzzling shit on there. I don't know, man. But yeah. But what happened was I actually ran into when I started doing. Actually, I came across a dude who was from DC and he just wanted to do like a little thing because he was like addicted to cigarettes. This is when you can smoke cigarettes too. You can buy them off commissary and all that. So he got all, he was cool with the dude Jason then he became cool with me. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm not going to keep doing these damn showers, man. This dude's, did it. yo, I'll get you two packs of cigarettes every week, man. You clean these showers for me, man. Cause I'm not, I'm not going to keep doing them. Eventually I got my job changed where I was just uh, wiping tables off like twice a day. That was it. Once before count time at four o'clock, and the other time, once before count time at the end of the night, which is around like, uh, I believe, if I remember right, it was like 9.30, 9.45. Sweetest job, and I got paid 25 a month. 25 a month, and that was the sweetest job. <laughs> One of the sweetest jobs, man. Because at the time I was tattooing. That's when I started tattooing, so I needed to free my time up so I could make my real money with the tattooing, which, the dude from DC, he was my lookout half the time, you know, I'm hitting him with, he didn't want tattoos, he just always wanted cigarettes. I would just hit him off with cigarettes, man, and be my lookout, make my bed, hey, I need something from commissary, go grab it for me, or I need something from the kitchen, hey, make sure you got a lookout for that. You know, he, he was a good ass dude, man. What was his name though? But that, that was just his thing, he just wanted to go around and do things for people in exchange, he do laundry, you know what I mean? He will he'll come up with cigarettes. One person you're gonna be looking for is a store man. Now usually units have like two or three. I think the unit I was at had two. One was a uh, one guy named was Ralph, and the other guy's name was Red. But I ain't really fuck with Red like that. Ralph was like, hey, hey, hey. and Ralph was all hyper man. He was hyper as shit. He was always on the move, going somewhere, doing store man stuff. I don't know. But I got introduced to him. He put me on the game. For a while, when I first got there, he was a real cool dude. Put me up with stuff until I got my stuff, you know, from, uh, you know, money in from, you know, family, whatever, friends. So I could buy my own stuff, you know. But you don't want to go in debt doing that. He always wore a baseball hat. He loved playing softball, man. He was always about that. And I tried to do the softball thing, but they take that shit serious, man. They was actually making bets throughout the season. And so they, they were, I was just trying to go out there and have fun. Nope. Nope. Sean, get your ass up out the goddamn field, man. We, we doing stuff over here. We taking this shit serious. You got to go, man. All right. All right. I understand y'all about the money right now. I was just trying to have some fun. And this last dude I'm going to talk about, he was from Pittsburgh. And this dude was a trip, man. He was just all over the place, man. I don't, I don't really know how to explain it, man. But he, he, he was... He turned out to be my celly for a while until he checked himself in. What he ended up doing was running up a lot of debt, sports gambling, borrowing things from the store, like I was saying before. Borrowed things from the store. And he just ran up a huge debt, man. He ended up checking himself in, man. He can't do that. And come to find out, he does this pretty much at every prison he was going to. He would just run up a debt. They put his ass, he checked himself in, put it put him in a fucking protective custody over in that uh, shoe, in the shoe unit. And he would just sit there for months until they transferred him to somewhere else. That's no way to do time. He didn't, he, he didn't seem to care. Nothing ever happened to him. Like, 
soon as he knew uh, he ran it up he was gone he wouldn't even tell nobody he would just but yeah that's some of the few people that I remember I'm pretty sure if I actually thought about it I would remember some other people I've been out for like 11 years now I mean I don't count the time I went back for a, a violation I don't count that but I've been out for like I said about 11 years now maybe I should talk about some things in the halfway house that'd be that'd be a good video but if I think some other ones man I could talk about on live stream which I do get on live every couple days on here so make sure you got the notifications on the way you know when I'm going live also when you know I upload a video you know let's get the YouTube algorithm working for my channel man hit that like button dislike button comment you know if you're new to this channel consider subscribing I do try to put out new content every day or every other day trying to get used to this vape again y'all I know y'all don't see a lot of you guys don't like me smoking and I don't like smoking myself but yeah that's pretty much it guys um hope you guys enjoyed it I think I'm gonna start doing these maybe once a week talking about prison stuff my experiences and all that stuff I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys enjoy it so i'm gonna start doing that at least once a week so be on the lookout for that i'll still be doing the reaction videos and that is about it i salute each and every one of you guys and i'll see you guys on the next video